Good morning. Well, we're expecting four to six inches of snow today. Additional inches. I literally just got <laughs> got the spider dug out of the driveway yesterday afternoon. It's been stuck there since the previous storm. <laughs> so, uh, not too happy about that. So, if any of you are from the South, I'm thinking of you Floridians in particular, if you say one more thing on social media about how cold you are because it hit 58 degrees last night, we will be beefing. Jesus tells us <clears throat> again and again and again in all four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, do not be afraid. Don't be anxious. Don't be scared. And if you look at the story of the storm when, you know, the guys are out on some kind of a weird fishing expedition at night, <laughs> uh, and then a squall comes up and the waves are threatening to, to swamp the boat, Matthew chapter 8, and they're terrified. And Jesus says to the guys, why are you so terrified, you guys of such little faith? There's information there, I think, for us. <clears throat> because fear, especially the mind-killing kind of fear, where we're just in a panic and we can't even think rationally for a second, that kind of fear is definitely related to our lack of faith. Now, the problem is, how do we deal with that? How do we get more faith? when we are swamped with terror. Jesus never actually <laughs> lays out a plan in the four Gospels, so we're kind of left looking elsewhere. For me, that elsewhere comes in 2 Timothy, where Paul writes, God did not give us a spirit of fear <clears throat> or cowardice, but the spirit of power and love and sound-mindedness. Sometimes that's translated as uh, self-control, but sound-mindedness is a better translation, actually. So those three things, love, so, uh, power, love, and sound-mindedness. So what do we do? Let's look at the first one, power. If we're in a fearful situation, <clears throat> we need to consider the power. The power question. Whose power am I going to rely on automatically in this situation? Am I going to automatically fall back on thinking that I got this? That, that I have to do this alone? From personal experience, I can tell you that's a that is a shit plan right there. Or is it going to be God's power that we're going to rely on? Clearly, that would be the better choice. Because as Paul reminds us, we can do all things in Christ who strengthens us. So that's the first thing. Figure out whose power we're going to rely on to get us through. <clears throat> the second thing is love. I know this sounds like some cheesy-ass, new-agey kind of card <clears throat> verse, but it really is. <laughs> it's a powerful one. First John says, there is no fear in love, bro. There's no fear in love. Those of you who are parents already know this we end up doing some pretty darn amazing, sometimes heroic things on behalf of our kids. <clears throat> In other words, 
the love that we show is like the, the total opposite of our selfishness and our self-centered triflingness. That's how God is. When we're living in fear, <clears throat> we're not living in love. And we're imagining then that everything is against us. Everybody, everything in the universe is working against poor old me. And so what do I do with that? I reach out and I tell somebody. I share my fear with others. I share my burdens and my struggles with other people. And what does that do? It automatically creates a loving community of support. And we should know by the time we're like 12 <clears throat> that a group of people can accomplish a hell of a lot more than an individual. So love is that second element that we need to combat and kind of outmaneuver our fear. And the third, the third, according to Paul in 2 Timothy, is that sound-mindedness. In other words, instead of just letting our emotions run away with us and take us down the rabbit hole, we can choose to go into our rational, conscious mind. That rational, conscious mind is, in fact, a sharing in the mind of God. Yes, we have feelings, right? We, we have that capacity uh, slash curse within us as humans. But all we have to do with that is recognize that we are having a strong emotional reaction. And instead of letting that run away with us, we can choose to use the upper brain, the cerebral cortex. Now, the problem with that, if, of course, it's not automatic. We have to pause and choose to go into our rational best mind. But the more we choose to live in the spirit of power and love and sound-mindedness, the easier it becomes to simply stand tall and walk bravely into whatever the future holds without any need to control without any illusions of being the boss and just be in that moment. This relates to something I just read in the Rule of Benedict just the other day. Benedict writes, and I'm paraphrasing, bro, don't lose your shit and run away from the road that leads to salvation because it's only natural that in the beginning that road looks pretty damn narrow. Today then, Monday, the start of another work week for many of us, another freaking uh, winter advisory day for others of us. <clears throat> if there is any fear in our lives right now. Let's take a breath. Let's take a breath and choose to determine which power am I going to choose? How am I going to express love in this moment? And how can I choose my higher conscious self to make more rational, God-like decisions today? Let's pray. Mighty, healing, comforting God, we come into your presence this morning, many of us, carrying fear 
and deep hurts. But we also carry faith. Today, gracious God, increase the amount of faith we do have so that we might choose this day to stop pretending that we have control of anything in this life. Help us to choose willingly to surrender to your power, to your love, to your consciousness, your way of looking at things. And whatever today brings, help us to know that you are holding us in the palm of your hand. We have nothing to fear because you are not ever going to abandon us. Amen. Have a blessed and productive and fearless Monday.